Don't miss the journey to the cross, the Palm Sunday experience with none other than Harrell Williams, the worship leader at the Star Church. Live at the perfect note in Hoover, Alabama, this experience will also feature Kendra Stoudemire, Darlin Stanfield, Jeremy Hill, and more. It's Sunday, March 24th at 3 p.m. You can get your tickets at perfectnolive.com. After weeks of having a packed house and a crazy parking lot, Pastor has made a decision to test an additional service time in the month of April. Beginning the first Sunday in April, the Star Church Birmingham location will have two services, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Beat me to the star. This is a heal moment for March 24. Reclaiming our health is important because Alabama ranks in the bottom five for overall health and number two in death related to heart disease. March's goal is to lose 10 pounds for health and to win 10 for the kingdom. Losing 10 pounds can improve your blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar levels. Start with small changes by decreasing your sugar, salt, fried, and high-fat food intake by eating more fresh fruits, vegetables, and healthy whole grains, and also daily exercise. Remember, our bodies are the temple of the Lord, so let's commit to getting fit. In 2023, 873 people made decisions for Christ through the Star Church, with 788 of these decisions being made since Easter 2023. It all started with Easter at the Crossplex, with 112 decisions for Christ, which makes it a no-brainer for us to go back. Save the day for Easter 2024 at the Birmingham Crossplex on Sunday, March 31st, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. In preparation for this amazing day, I'm challenging every star member to win 10. How do you win 10? Invite 10 people to Easter that you want to see close to Jesus and RSVP them by going to the church website. Invite 10 people to Easter that you want to see close to Jesus and RSVP them by going to the church website. That's www.beatmetothestar.net. RSVP you, your family, and all of your guests today. Let's make heaven big. Great day, beautiful people. I'm Dr. Thomas Beaver, servant leader, senior pastor of the Star Church. I want to take this privilege, moment, this honor, and this opportunity to welcome you into the Wednesday morning prayer call. Do me a favor. Everybody can be a part of the share ministry. So many people are always asking, Dr. Beavers, how is it that I can help? You can help me by helping us spread this prayer call to a much, much larger audience. You have access and influence over people that I don't have influence over. So tap the share button that is on your screen. We got a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful topic, a very sensitive topic this morning, a very important topic this morning. And I really believe that it is absolutely important for as many of you to be in the room as possible. So go ahead and tap the share button that is on your screen. When you do it, a link is going to pop up. When that link pops up, I want you to share this message with five people inside of your text message or your email contacts. Do not forget to like and to comment. Go ahead and drop your name and your city in the chat. Put some fire inside of that chat. Fire inside of the chat. When you do it, it does something to the algorithms. And the same way that I popped up on your feed, I'll be able to pop up on other people's feed as well. Last but not least, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. When you subscribe, the, the content automatically pops up on your feed. Do me a favor. If you're not on our text messaging list, go ahead and text the word STAR to 1-833-270-3616, and you will be on our text messaging list or just scan the QR code that you see on the screen. One of the benefits to being on our mass text system is that you get up-to-the-minute updates of all of the wonderful things going on at the star before it ever hits the TV, the radio, social media. Get it firsthand by way of your cell phone. That being said, I am not by myself. I got my girl with me this morning. You already know who she is, and you already know what this is. None other than <laughs> Candace Beavers. <laughs> good morning. What's up? How you feeling? I feel good. Good. I feel good, too. To God be all the glory for the great things he's done. It's Wednesday morning, and God has afforded us another opportunity um, just to be able to pray. We got a very, very sensitive subject Mm -hmm. this morning we do so much in this church fighting for marriages to stay together but truth be told 
there are some couples uh, within our church, within the body of Christ, just within life, period, who have gone through divorce and some people who are currently going through divorce. And we want to take this opportunity to minister to them on this prayer call this morning. So right. that being said, I want to pray um, for the couples who are currently going through divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to pray as God leads me. Then I'm going to kick it over to you and I want you to just pray for healing in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Healing in their hearts. And then I want you to kick it back to me. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We glorify you. You do all things well. You are so worthy to be praised. The root word of worthy is worth. Mm -hmm. You are worth our praise. You are worth our honor. You are worth all the glory, God. We give it to you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we say thank you for waking us up. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you for putting food on our tables and clothes on our backs. Your word declares that we're two or more gathered together, touching and agreeing. Whatever we ask, it shall be done. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Candace and I touch and we agree, Father God. And we touch and we agree along with the people that are on this prayer call right now. God, some are on the prayer line. Some are literally tuned in via YouTube. Father God, we touch and we agree on behalf of those that are going through divorce right now in the name of Jesus. On behalf of those that have already gone through divorce right now in the name of Jesus, God. You know exactly what led to the divorce, Father God, but regardless of what led to the divorce, I want them to know, Father God, that you still love them, Father God. We know yes. that your word says in Malachi chapter number two, around verse number 16, that you literally hate divorce. But although you hate divorce, you don't hate the people who get divorced. God, we know that marriage was instituted and family was instituted before you instituted the church. And anything that you've put together, Satan wants to destroy and tear down, Father God. You instituted the church, but we know that churches are strong when the family unit is strong. And so, God, when we've allowed Satan to, to come in and to tear down the family unit, God, you hate the work of Satan. But, God, you don't hate the people. So, God, I pray right now, God, that they would be free. God, that they would know that there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but who walk after the spirit. Father God, I pray that they would know that they are forgiving, that you have let go of every offense and treated the offender as if it has never taken place. Yes. God, regardless of what they have done to cause it, Father God, or what they've done to contribute to it. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they would know that they, they that you still love them, God, that you love them with an everlasting love right now in the name of Jesus, God, that they would not feel far from you, God, but that they would feel close to you. Your word declares that you are nigh to the brokenhearted. And so right now in the name of Jesus, as they draw nigh to you, I pray that you would draw nigh to them. I pray that you would just wrap them in your loving arms of protection, that you build a fence, a shield, and a hedge of protection around them. That say they cannot get in and that they, they cannot get out, Father God. And in the name of Jesus, God, I pray right now that you would just... Uh, massage their heart in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus the Christ of Nazareth God and I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will know that you have not given up on them Father God when Satan whispers in their ear Father God and Satan tries to bring about shame Father God God I pray that you set them free from shame right now whom the son says free is free indeed right now in the name of Jesus God I pray for the couple that is contemplating divorce yes. God that is not already gone down that road I pray for the couple mm -hmm. that is contemplating divorce Father God and the divorce voice is in progress father God I pray right now God that there will be a change of mind that leads to a change of behavior father God I pray right now that you will cause them to repent in the name of Jesus even before the divorce is filed and even before the divorce is final right now in the name of Jesus I pray for marriages that are dead that you resurrect dead marriages right now in the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth father God father God people have gone to them father God people have tried to encourage them to go in the opposite direction to go in a different direction father God and they've been unable to get through father God you've sent laborers you've sent co-laborers father God but I pray that you would speak to them directly by the power of your Holy Spirit and as you speak to them by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray that they would harden up their hearts in the day that they hear your voice, Father God. God, I know that some are facing perpetual deception, Father God, that there's been adultery in the marriage, Father God, and there's been unrepentant adultery in the marriage. God, I pray right now that you bring the unrepentant adulterer to a place of repentance. I pray that you would deal with them, Father God. Your word declares that vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. And I pray that where there's been repentance, Father God, 
in the name of Jesus, God, that there would be forgiveness and restoration and reconciliation, Father God. And then some are dealing with not just unrepentant deception, they're dealing with unrepentant desertion, Father God. For one reason or the other, Father God, there's a spouse that has left the home, Father God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, Father God, that because you are ev everywhere, Father God, that you would deal with the spouse that is in the home, deal with the spouse that has left the home, Father God, in the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, Father God. Father God, I just pray right now that we would harden out our hearts in the day that we hear your voice, Father God. God, and then we know, Father God, that some people are entering and going down this road of divorce, and it's not for deception. It's not for desertion. God, it's just been a series of disappointments, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. And, and God, I just pray right now that you minister to their hearts in the name of Jesus, Father God. God, minister to their hearts like only you will, like only you can, God. Give them hope where they are hopeless, Father God. Show them the light, Father God, where they're walking in darkness right now in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. Those that don't see a way out, those that, that the enemy is with spring in their ears saying that divorce is the only way out. Satan, in the name of Jesus, we condemn your voice right now in the name of Jesus. We condemn your voice that says that God does not love you. We condemn your voice that says that God is not with you right now in the name of Jesus. We condemn your voice that says divorce is the only way out. We condemn your voice, Father God, that says those that are divorced will never recover right now in the name of Jesus. We condemn your voice of shame. Every lie that you have spoken, we condemn it. You speak in lies. You are a liar and the father of lies. We condemn your lies right now. And God, we thank you right now, not just for speaking, but we thank you for healing. Lord, I just pray for every person who is experiencing um, the process of divorce, Lord, and I pray for everyone who's experienced divorce, Lord, heal them in the areas where they are torn down, where they're weak, um, where they feel like they've been abused, Lord, mentally, spiritually, Lord, and even in areas of physical abuse, God, I just pray for their um, stability, their healing, God. I pray for children who are, um, who have been a part of divorce, Lord. I just pray that you give them um, the strength that they need, Lord. I pray that they um, just attach to community, God, that knows their situation, that understands their situation, yes, Lord, Lord, and give them the grace to know that they're not in this alone, Lord. Even the people they would least suspect us, Lord, as leaders, Lord, we have faced this dilemma, Lord, and it we know how it tears down families, God. Lord, with you just taking one step at a time, God, we know that they can be healed. They are healed, Lord. And in the areas where um, they feel that they don't have the area, um, the ca capability of forgiveness, God, please help them to to forgive, Lord. And it starts with just confession, Lord, confessing that they're weak in the area of forgiveness, confessing the areas that they need healing in, God. And I just pray that we're able to be a light, Lord, and support and guidance in this area in Jesus' name. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we know that there are other prayer requests that are scrolling in and throughout the chat. There are names, Father God, that have been entered into the chat. We know that every name is attached to an actual prayer request. And then some have specific prayer requests, Father God. Father God, we come into agreement, Father God, with those that have put names in the chat, those that have put prayer requests in the chat, Father God, and we pray in agreement and in alignment with your will, Father God. We ask that you move our hearts into alignment with your will. We know your will by your word. We know your will for healing through your word. We know your will for marriage through your word. We know your will for our children through your word. We know your will, Father God, for our mental and our mind states through your word. We know your will for our emotions through your word. We know your will for provision through your word. We know your will for protection through your word, God. We know your will for peace through your word. We know your will for prosperity through your word, Father God. Whatever we're dealing with in life, we know your will, Father God, through your word. So this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And we know that if you hear us, we already have the petitions of our heart. So God, I thank you for answering every prayer according to your will. Thank you for answering every prayer according to your word. Father God, Candace and I touch and agree, Father God, on behalf of the Star Church, Father God. Father God, as we come into agreement with them for the things that they are believing you for, for the things that they are praying for right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Oh God, we say thank you right now, God. Thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you are about to do. God, we ask that you open our ears to hear you, open our eyes to see you, open our hearts to receive you, open our minds and grant us understanding, Father God. There's somebody that you've delivered, Father God, they feel like backsliding this morning. And so right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, give them the strength to keep moving. Give them the strength to stay surrendered to you as they 
they stay surrendered to you. God, I pray that you would renew their strength. Mount them up on wings as eagles. Cause them to run and not be weary. Cause them to walk and not faint. God, in the name of Jesus, you said, blessed are those that endure temptation. For when we're tried, we receive the crown of life that you promised to those who love you. We don't say when we're tempted, we're tempted of evil. You cannot be tempted of evil and you don't tempt any man, but we're tempted when we're drawn away of our own lust and enticed. When lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. When sin is finished, it brings forth death. Help us to stay surrendered to you. Holy Spirit, work inside of us to will and do your good pleasure. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord this morning. Yeah. From whom all blessings flow. Hey, listen, this is a very, very important topic this morning. This morning, we are ministering to people who are currently going through divorce or who have already gone through divorce or who are contemplating divorce. And I believe that it is important for you to get as many people in the room as you possibly can. So I do want to invite you to tap the share button that is on your screen. A link is going to pop up. I want you to share that link. Uh, via text message or email with five people. And if you're not on our text messaging mass text list, I want to invite you to text star to 1-833-270-3616 or scan the QR code that is on the screen and you will be on our text messaging list. So Candace, this morning we're ministering to around this idea of divorce. Mm -hmm. Um, at the end of every invitation that I give when I preach, I talk about who needs a pastor, who needs a church. And one of the parts of the invitation is if you're contemplating marriage, you need premarital counseling, you need a church. If you're already in marriage, you need marriage counseling, you need a church, you need a pastor. So many couples have been responding to that invitation. In our church, we do so much to fight for marriages, but the reality is... There are people in our congregation, other congregations, and just in general, who have gone through divorce, who are currently going through divorce, and maybe will experience divorce in the future. Um, you and I have never gone through divorce, but we've been close twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we have been close twice. So what would you say to the person who's listening and who's skeptical of this conversation right now what can they tell me? Because they've never gone through it. Oh, we went through it. Um, <laughs> we, we've been there. You know, the emotional part of it, the, um, the actual process of filing twice. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, we, we know. We, we've experienced it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, even in that time when it was actually filed twice, um, you and I both thought the marriage was dead. You and yeah. I both um, saw no hope. You and I both were in a really dark place and we saw no way out. But when we saw no hope, some kind of way, God saw what we didn't see. Right. What would you say right. to that? Because cause somebody sees no hope. Yeah. Somebody I, got papers filed right now. They see no hope. Yeah. We, um... Ours was filed for what a whole year. Yeah. Um, but one thing that that sticks to me through our process is what you, um, the very first wedding you officiated. I remember you used the the cell phone analogy. Yeah. And that's you literally did that. Mm. You know, you um, you held on mm. till we got some reception. Wow. Um, and. For those who haven't heard, you know, any of your wedding um, officiant, you know, messages, you you say, you know, you compare marriage to being on the cell phone and you will hit a dead spot mm. in your marriage. Wow. And I guess you preached that and, and spoke it over so many people and, and you applied it like your muscle memory applied it because I'm just like, OK, why is this? Why are you not signing this paperwork? Yeah. You know, and um, yeah. Yeah. And you held on. Yeah. And um, sometimes in marriages, people do hit dead spots. Yeah. And you may be in a dead spot 
longer than you anticipate. You know, yeah. on a cell phone, it dead spot it may be a couple of seconds. It may yeah. be a minute. I, I know driving to our home, we live in the country. Mm -hmm. And on that back road, we always go through a dead spot. <laughs> Matter of fact, you already know when the phone goes out and we lose reception, oh, he must be in a dead spot. Yeah. But in reality, somebody's in a dead spot, and it's lasting longer than a couple of seconds. Right. Uh, somebody's in a dead spot, and it's lasting longer than what they anticipate. Um, how does that person have hope? You don't. You honestly don't. I know there were days where I just pray, like, God, you don't have to do this. Mm. You know, and um, in a roundabout way, that's still, you know, that's a prayer of hope. You yeah. know, it, it's a prayer of desperation. Yeah. But um, it it definitely, you know, it's it's one of those things where just the supernatural kicks in when you don't even have the energy or even the willingness, the desire. Yeah. You know, when your hope has totally faded. And again, I just go to the fact that I can't say that I I wanted our marriage. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you just didn't file paperwork because you were being defiant or what. But I think part of it was you just being stubborn. <laughs> That's <laughs> Well, I, I mean, there were periods where I didn't want it either. Um, but although there were periods where I went through it and, 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 like, I didn't want it, I just, for some reason, I just I couldn't bring myself to do it. My pastor, our pastor, Dr. Ronald Sterling, always told me, he says, uh, Thomas, the same word that you are blessed to know is the same word that holds you accountable. Mm. And so he says, the thing you got going for you is the thing you got going against you. Yeah. What you got going for you is that you know the word. You know the scripture backwards and forwards. Yeah. And he said, Thomas, it's easy to preach the word to other people. Mm -hmm. He said, but all of us as ministers of the gospel come to a place where you got to live the word out for yourself. That same word that you preach to other people, he says, this is the time for you to take your own medicine. Right. And so even in times when I wanted to give up, uh, it was my pastor who was in my ear uh, who really gave me the push and the encouragement to keep going until we got to the other side because he would tell me like Thomas there is another side. Yeah. And during that those dead spots it was time to work on us. Yeah, individually. Individually, yeah, yeah. not us cuz we didn't want to work on us. Yeah. We didn't know how to work on us and um and I think the humbling part for me was like you are the issue, Candace. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? We don't, we look at the other person and to the people um, who have faced divorce or are contemplating divorce, like you are equally responsible, mm. both good and bad. Wow. And, um, you know, cause I don't want, you know, and that's, that's kind of like turning the knife when you, you, you say like, I'm part of the issue. Yeah. Like rest assured, I'm gonna speak for the wives. He wrong too, yeah. but it's for the individuals in that relationship to come to that realization. Like, yeah, I am a part of the problem. Man, I am so the good. problem. That's good. So I remember one time when we were going through, I'm not gonna name names, but there was a deacon and a deaconess in the church. And it was after a Wednesday noonday Bible study I don't think they knew exactly what was going on with you and I, but they knew something was going on. Mm. And both of them came to me, and they, they know who they are. They're probably watching right now. And they said, hey, look. They said, baby, like sometimes you just need that that encouragement and that 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 wisdom of yeah. your elders to let you know that it's going to be all right. Yeah. They, they said, baby, we, we got married. And... Uh, I think they said we went through divorce and we, we was apart for like maybe nine months or a year or something like that. Yeah. And then we got married again and we ain't never looked back and we've been married for over 30 or 40 years or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just what they said. It was when they said it. Yeah. And it's almost like when you're going through it, like you need somebody to encourage you, but you almost don't want anybody to say anything because to even talk about it hurts so bad. Yeah. It just brings tears to your eyes. Yeah. What would you say to the person who's in that predicament? They need somebody to encourage them, but yeah. almost don't even want to open up to anybody because 
Satan is in their ear telling them you ought to be ashamed because yeah. of what you're going through. Um, and just to even talk about it is like picking out a scab. It just, it just hurts. Yeah. And it's even um, more difficult when you so-called have position yeah. or title. And I'm not even talking from a church perspective. You could be the... Um, you know, that family member who looks like they have it all together in the yeah. family and the marriage is going good. Like, you have to make those calls for help. Wow. You know, um, and I was the same way. I think we need to be more proactive when you get that nudge to call somebody or just say something to somebody. You don't know what that's for. I, I'm i going to name names. Yeah. <laughs> um it was days when we were going through it, and I know specifically, Wendy Rice would just send me text messages out of nowhere. Wow. And I'm just like, what time is talking to these people about, you know? <laughs> but um, she would send me texts, and it was she didn't pry. It was just like, I'm thinking about you. You know, I'm praying for you. Are you okay? You know, and, um, you know, sometimes we feel like we look like, we have it all together and we we're putting on the face mm. that it's okay. But you know, people tap into to what you own and they, it's a lot of people that respond. Man, that's so good. That's so good. So biblically speaking, the Bible gives one reason for the termination of a marriage that God is pleased with. Mm. And the reason for the termination of a marriage that God is pleased with is death. So in our vows, we say to death, do us part. Mm -hmm. um, it gives two reasons for the termination of a marriage that God is not pleased with. One of those reasons is deception, which is adultery. Mm -hmm. uh, the other reason is desertion. And so that whole deception piece, adultery, is in Matthew 19, where some Pharisees came and asked Jesus a question. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? And they were asking him the question not because they wanted to answer, but they were trying to trip him up. Right. And Jesus immediately took them back to the beginning. He said, from the beginning, it was not so. He says, but I granted Moses uh, permission to give you a writing of divorce because of the hardness of your hearts. Right. I was looking at that scripture um, with my pastor. And I read it my whole life, but it dawned on me, there's never been a divorce in the history of the world where either one or both parties' heart was not heart. And when you talk about the hardness of hearts, you're talking about unforgiveness. And mm -hmm. the reason that unforgiveness is dangerous because Jesus said that if, if we don't forgive men their trespasses, he won't forgive us our trespasses. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons that God is not pleased with, um, which is deception, adultery. It doesn't mean that you have to divorce in the event of adultery. Um, I believe that God would prefer you to repent and to work it out to bring him glory. Mm -hmm. But you you can divorce. The Bible does give a biblical reason, like, if that's why you're divorcing. Right. All right. But then the other one is desertion. In 1 Corinthians 7, it says, if a believer is married to an unbeliever and the unbeliever chooses to leave, then the believer is not bound to the marriage. Right. Now, I say all that to say this. Those are like major reasons for divorce. But most, you know, in counseling people, most of what I'm hearing, most people are not getting divorced for deception or desertion, which are the major biblical reasons. Mm -hmm. Most people are getting divorced over this word just called disappointment. Mm. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. What would you say to the person who's just, just disappointed? A series of disappointments over the years, so I'm ready to call it quits. For me, you know, it was those um, unspoken expectations mm. that caused disappointments. And the pedestal, mm. you know, causes disappointments where you're putting this person, you're esteeming them and expecting them to be your all in all, my everything. Mm. And um, it's like, lower, lower that. Not that you should settle for... Um, for nothing you know for foolishness but what are those expectations and have they been expressed have you communicated those expectations wow wow that's that's good because a lot of times we do go into marriage with expectations mm -hmm. 
And most of them are not communicated expectations. Most of them are unspoken, right? You it's, know, expectations. It's like, a, you know, my mama cooked and cleaned. <laughs> Honey, I don't cook, I don't clean. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> how can you expect that of me? You yeah. know, but if it's not um, communicated, then yeah, that yeah. can cause some real tension. It can cause tension, but in the eyes of God, those are not reasons for divorce mm-hmm. i believe god would say okay i understand that this is cause causing tension this person was raised this way this person was raised yeah. another way and the way that we were raised sometimes it's not a matter of right and wrong it's just different right and so in that event those people have to come together and figure out okay out of our differences what are we going to do to establish our own world together mm-hmm. yeah what you think? <laughs> what that sound like? That sound like us. Oh yeah. yeah. We um again, it's you have to and I'm speaking for us, we have to become so selfless. Mm. You know, I could want these things, but it's it's all for me to feel good. What yeah. are you doing for me? Yeah. And um the danger in that is you kind of almost become you like lording over someone mm. like is this your spouse or wow. is this your slave Ooh. and um you know it's like bring those standards down to to what is um applicable not yes. that you can't aspire to be that way and achieve certain things in relationships um but deal with me where I am. Man, that's so good. So I, I, I want to bring up this elephant in the room. Because the other day we were talking. Uh, we were out with a group of people. And uh, we addressed some things that we have heard uh, down throughout the years. And I was asking you, is it true? Um, that in, in the African-American context, that oftentimes, instead of us raising our girls to be wives, we raise them to be mothers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we really don't even raise them to be married. We raise them to be mothers. Yeah. And not only do we raise them to be mothers, um, we don't necessarily raise our sons to be fathers. And we don't raise our sons uh, to be husbands. Mm. Uh, what are some of the ways, and I want you to go here with exactly how you answered it previously, that we raise our girls to be mothers instead of instead of wives, all the way down to, like, what kids play with. Oh, yeah, just, you know, for Christmas, the girls are getting dolls. You know, they're taught how to be mothers through just play. Yeah. You know, and... Um, it's making me rethink something that's very, very hard, because as boys, we're taught, put that doll down. Right. You, you know, yeah. other people play, play with dolls. You're not going to play with a dog because you ain't going down that path. Yeah. So, like, boys are looked at a certain way. We're looked at to be, like, you're going down a path of being gay. Yeah. You know, if you play with a dog. But in actuality, you know, if a young girl is playing with a dog and just say she's she's the mother, the mother didn't, didn't make the baby by themselves. Right. And that's where a lot of confusion is coming from. It's like, um, but it's, and a lot of times, let's, you know, just still speaking about kids and play, that play is is imitating what's happening at home. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not looked at for men to be nurturers, to yeah. be, you know, um, to care for their their children in the same way a woman would. Yeah. So it's like to for a boy to play with a doll is is you know, it's a feminine quality, but it's like, no, that's a male quality. It's called a father, you wow. know, for those of us who don't have those in, you know, in the home. And it's a real, real sad reality. Wow. You know, um, for, you know, even for men, I, I have issues with that at, um, with the, at the learning center. For men to be teachers, women and men both are like, okay, I don't want them changing you know, my child, but it's like, well, in the event something happens to, you know, and like in our household, like you bathe our children, you take yeah. care of our children, you changed our children when they were um, babies. Like that's right. the responsibility of parents, right? Of a parent. not the woman, 
yeah. but of parents. Parents together. And that's right. the benefit of having a two-parent household. Exactly. That you don't have to do everything on your own. So right. in closing, there are people who have actually been di been divorced. Yeah. Um, for some of them, it's fresh. For some of them, it's been a while. Uh, but Satan is, is pretty much telling them it's over. You'll never recover. You'll never bounce back. Yeah. Um, you should be ashamed. Satan is attacking them with the spirit of condemnation mm -hmm. um, that you'll never be able to move forward from this. What would you say to that person? In some cases, this is true. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you're going to feel those things, but you can rebound from those. You yes. don't have to make the decision. You can work things out. You know, God can fix it. We say that all the time and, and look at it like, oh, it's just church talk or it's cliche, yeah. but God can fix it. Yeah. I would say to anybody who's actually gone through with it, you know, take the opportunity to love on you. Mm -hmm. uh, take the opportunity to 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 work on you. Um, take the opportunity to focus on being the right person to assess what you could have did different in the relationship, even if it's pig different. Because some yeah. people say I ain't do nothing; it was all them. Right. Well, I mean, we, I mean, we might have a picking problem. Mm. You know. Yeah. So. If I pick last time, like, Lord, I want you to pick this time because mm -hmm. you know what's best for me. Right, right. Good stuff. Man, I love you. Love you. I love you so much. Hey, everybody, look at that ring. Zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom in, strict. Ah! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I played too much, don't I? Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, in closing, I got a couple of announcements. Go to the website, www.beatmetothestar.net, and make sure that you are RSVP for Easter and win 10. It is imperative that you do it. We're going to be preaching the gospel in Birmingham, Pale City, Sylacauga, and in Forestdale. We're expecting a great harvest of souls, and I want you to RSVP and RSVP your family as well. Uh, also, uh, I'm proud to announce that uh, I have a passion to reach kids through music, and I am coming out uh, with, with a song for kids and a cartoon for kids. Uh, the cartoon is the Tom Tom Rom Bomb cartoon. That's what my little girls call me, Tom Tom Rom Bomb. Uh, that's the cartoon, and the song is the books of the Bible. And so we start with the Old Testament. That's going to be dropping. I hope to have it ready by Easter. Uh, but if not by Easter, shortly thereafter. And so they're actually working on the animation right now. So I'm really excited about that. Keep your ears low to the ground. And closing several ways to be able to give God our best. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We're open. Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're open. If you give it in person but those hours don't fix, go to the Dropbox. You can also mail it. 7400 London Avenue, South 35206. Give online. Beat me to the star.net. Forward slash give, give by text, text the amount that God has laid upon your heart to 855 912 7781. Cash app, dollar sign, beat me to the star, Venmo at beat me to the star. Lord, take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bless the gifts and the givers. May they be used for the edification and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Now, when the hymn is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be that glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And everyone that agree with this prayer said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I love you so much. See you this afternoon, 12 noon Bible study. Peace.